Welcome back to OTR. We talked at the beginning of the program about the Cape Bridges. So, so let's talk about this. There's trouble on the water, too. The Steamship Authority says it'll be forced to cut back summer service between Cape and the Islands if there aren't enough workers. So what is your understanding about what's going on here? Uh, well, look, we need more workers. There's a housing shortage that needs to happen. The Steamship Authority, you know, they have all people. They, they have good wages. It's a good union uh, run operation. So if they're really struggling. And there's a need for it. I mean, people want to do it. Yeah. Need for it. That just shows um, uh, how desperate it is for businesses that aren't able to pay yeah. those wages. Yeah. Um, and look, the Steamship Authority, I think they're doing 15,000 people a day. They could do uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, it's it's a lot. They're seeing a lot. Um, and, and you know, compared to the, the Steamship Authority has its issues. It has its issues throughout the years. We've done a lot to hold them accountable. And and Kiluding, they just hired a new chief operating officer. They've never had that. Yeah. That's really important. Yeah. But look, this is uh, a, a transportation company in Massachusetts that doesn't get a dime of state money um, and still serves over a million people a year. Like compared to the MBTA, this thing is, runs like a Ferrari, right? So um, look, it has its issues. We need to hold it, continue to hold it accountable. But as a transportation network in the state, it's doing a good job of, of safely delivering passengers. All right, I want to get to a proposal you have made, and it's very popular out there, the four-day work week. But I want to ask you what it means. Are we talking about four 10-hour days, four eight-hour days, what, more remote? What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, look. So it, it's it's uh, four eight-hour days is the proposal. So, so this a thirty-two-hour week. That's right. Yeah. For the same How does that amount. Sound? For the you same know, salary. There's a smile on your face. I feel like I that isn't feel happening like, at Channel Five. What's Channel Five doing? Come no, on, no, 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 I don't know. Your employees are—they look yeah. kind of happy. We're about going it. to expand to eight-hour, eight-day weeks. That's yeah. what we're yeah. going to expand to. I mean, look. This is this is a pilot program. It is for businesses that want to sign up to join it. They can. Um, and look, and they, they would get tax incentives. They would get for tax them. incentives as they did it. It's a two-year pilot. They would, these businesses would have to be monitored throughout the pilot and studied. Um, so basically, this is a two-year study pilot. The reason we filed this is because there's been a lot of other pilots and studies done elsewhere throughout the world, and the results are really compelling. Mm -hmm. Not only is there mm -hmm. no drop-off in productivity, we see right. increases in productivity, and then of course we see increases in employee retention employee attraction, something we were just right. talking about being a huge issue right. in our state. And as you can imagine, yeah, so people are the, happier. The five day work week is what, about 100 years old. It was created it in, 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 out of the auto assembly plant. So mm -hmm. it, it, time to evolve is, is logical. Let's go through some quick lightning round questions at the sure. time we have left. Let's move to the lightning round. Looking for quick answers. The House supports online lottery. The Senate is less enthusiastic. Will it happen? Uh, I think it should happen. Um, you know, we need to bring parity with the new online options out there. Mayor Michelle Wu has brought rent control. It's passed the city council. It's at the state house. Will it pass on Beacon Hill? I really, I really don't know. I mean, it's honestly, I know that's that's kind of more of a Boston city issue. On the Cape and Islands, we don't hear anything about rent control. In my personal view, if a community wants to do that, that meets their own community, you know, maybe that's okay. But Frankly, it's not something that the Cape and Islands are Te scrambling for. Teacher strikes are illegal here in Massachusetts. There's a move to change that. D do you support that change? I'm, I'm definitely open to it. It's not something that's really crossed my desk. I know it's gotten some attention in the press, but honestly, it's not something that we've heard a lot about mm -hmm. from my local mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. on. Um, but look, I think you know we are a country that's made stronger because of our unions, and we need to continue to support our unions. The state auditor, Diana DiZoglio, she wants to audit the legislature. Mm -hmm. uh, there has been pushback from both the House Speaker and the Senate President who say she does not have the authority to do that. Do you think she does? Our country was built on separation of powers. The fact that the executive branch is trying to get their hands and, and control the legislative branch, I think is, is troubling and, and that should be troubling to a lot of citizens. You are a next gen politician. Should there be an age limit to run for president? When, you, when you're president, should there be an age limit? After you're a certain age, boom, should it be over? I'd be open to that. You'd be open to that, I'd he says with a smile on your face. Yeah, there. look, I. Um, I, I'm not, I, I don't think this is an ageist thing. I think there's a lot of incredibly brilliant uh, people out there of, of all ages. But if you look at some of the rules that Wall Street has around board 
uh, terms for people of a certain age, I, I think that's possibly a good model to look at. Dylan Fernandez, thanks for your time. Yeah. Happy Memorial Day weekend, by the way.